Good evening, guys. Thank you very much for joining. Just let me just pick the background. There we are. And let me share the screen, okay? It's this one. And today we're going to continue with yesterday's <clears throat> uh, topics, right? And also we are going to be checking some of the um, sections, right? That you're working um, on the platform because it seems as still there are some doubts about some of the exercises, but don't worry, we're going to take a look at them today. <clears throat> so today's, you know, the last day of the month, right? It's February 28th is our session number two, and uh, we are going to begin with the attendance. Give me a second. I'm going to move the cameras over here, and we're going to hide this information. There we go. Okay, so Alba, the airport, Tal Diaz. Present teacher. Thank you. Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Present. Thank you. Eh, Ana Francisca Garcia Nieto. Present teacher. Thank you. Carlos Antonio González Nuila. And Claudia Marcela Linares Urquilla. Present. Thank you. Give me a second. Diego Antonio Melendez Mayen. Present. Thank you. Um, Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Present teacher. Thank you. Francisco Antonio Sanchez Jovel. Present. Thank you. Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Jose Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Present. Thank you. Jose Francisco Peña Peña. Jose Isaías Portillo Ramos. Present teacher. Thank you. Jose Jovito Torres Amaya. Present teacher. Thank you. Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. Maria Azucena Ayala de Flores. Present. Thank you. Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Present teacher. Thank you. Nady Ivis Mendez Albeño. Present teacher. Thank you. Rafael Antonio Morales Martinez. Present. Thank you. Rodrigo Antonio Melendez Morales. Present. Thank you. Rodrigo Daniel Melendez Mayen. Present. Thank you, Rosa Maria de Milagro Perez de Paz. I'm here. Thank you, Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Present. Thank you, Jensi Marlene Leon Lopez. Present. Thank you, Zulma Beatriz Perez Galdames. Okay. Ah, okay, thank you, Zulma. Thank you, everyone, and thank you so much for joining. This is Jose Francisco Peña. Ah, okay. Bye, ahorita, Jose Francisco. Ahí está. Yep. So thank you very much for joining today, guys. And we're going to continue with uh, what we started yesterday. So yesterday, we were talking a little bit about gerunds, right? And uh, also when we used them, we said that we were going to begin with the first topic, which is gerunds. And then we're going to move to infinitives, right? Um, what do you remember about gerunds? Uh, yesterday I shared some um, information related to gerunds. Uh, let me see. Um, do you remember some of the verbs that we use when we want to um, express, you know, our ideas using gerunds? What are some of the verbs that we that we use or that are followed? by by gerunds love love okay. enjoy like okay. very good okay. excellent uh-huh great and also i shared with you a list right through the chat uh through the whatsapp chat right so you will be able to find more details about that uh, in the list i saw that uh, some of you actually 
we're at it until today, I think. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to uh, resend it, right? So the rest of the um, students can have that info too. I'm going to share it right now. Let's see. There you go. For the rest, right, you can see the information there. Now, we were saying that whenever we use gerunds, right, there are specific things that we need to remember. Okay, this is what I was presenting yesterday, right? So we were saying that, oh, give me a second. I think there is a microphone that is opened. Okay, stop. Okay, so it says um, some more verbs that are followed by verbs with ing include, there you have some examples, stop, finish, recommend, considered, admit, denied, avoid, risk, imagined, and feel like, right? So those are some examples of the verbs that we're going to use, right? Or that whenever we use them, we need to use a gerund right after. There you have some examples. Yesterday, we stopped here, okay? And you were able to answer, you know, the, the very first exercise. It is important to remember that there are also other verbs, right? Four verbs that I mentioned yesterday that can be used with either a gerund or an infinitive. And those verbs are like, as you said before, love, hate, and also can't stand, right? Those four options or those four verbs can be used with either an infinitive or a gerund, okay? So what else? What else do we have to know about gerunds? Well, we also use verbs in ing after give up, put off, go on, and carry on. So these are phrasal verbs, guys. And whenever we have a phrasal verb that includes one preposition, like in the case, right? Give up means stop. For example, you can say, oh, um, I think I'm going to give up smoking, right? Give up is to stop doing something or I'm going to stop eating meat, right? And probably you will become a vegetarian, right? Put off. Put off means delayed until later. For example, you, you, you say something like, I have to do the exercises on the platform, but I'm going to do it later because right now I feel tired. So you put off, right? You put off the exercises or you put the exercises off. Now, what happens there? Well, I can say, um, uh, oh, you know what? I'm going to put off, you know, um, uh, doing the exercises because I feel very tired. So I think I'm going to go to bed and I'm going to complete them tomorrow. Go on, carry on, continue, right? So you need to um, go on working hard in the project or you need to carry on um, learning, you know, the new um duties in your new position, right, etc. So here we have some examples. I've given up buying newspapers. I don't read them anymore. But nowadays, almost anyone buys, you know, newspaper, but you shouldn't put off telling him what happened. You need to tell him now. Kate doesn't want to retire. She wants to go on working. Or she wants to carry on working, right? You keep interrupting me, right? Or you keep interrupting when I'm talking or you keep on interrupting me when I'm talking, right? So uh, with some verbs, you can use the structure verb plus someone plus verb plus ing. So a gerund, for example, you can stop people doing what they want or I can't imagine George riding a motorcycle. Did she really say that? I don't remember her saying that. Sorry to keep you waiting for so long, right? So those phrases that we have there it, it are those verbs that can be, you know, or those structures that can be verb, someone plus verb plus ing, right? So we have that option too. We, we can do that. And you know what? If you want, I'm going to share this info in the chat. Give me a second. So you can have it, okay? Bear with me. 
Let me see. I'm going to share this one. Give me one moment. There we have. Well, it's still loading, but just give me a moment. There we have a yes in the chat. And also we're going to include this info that I just shared, okay? This one. Okay. There we go. So then, right, we are going to work with this exercise. So everyone, please, um, let's go ahead and work in this one. You already have the verbs. And what you have to do is just to complete the sentences, right? And uh, you are going to include ing to each of them. Okay, so do you have any questions? Questions, guys? I shared with you the information in the chat so you can have it handy, okay? And what about, what if, what if I give you um, four minutes? Okay, I'm going to give you four minutes right now. Oh, let me see, four minutes. There we go. Okay. Let's see. And we are going to have it here. So your four minutes begun already, guys. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm taking notes of the exercises that we're going to resolve today. And if I'm not mistaken, those are 1.8. 1.8. Actually, more than one people said 1.8. Then knowledge checkpoint two, three, and four. Two, three, and four. Okay, cool. Let me know when you finish, guys. Let me know when you're ready, please.
Okay, guys, time's up. Uh, would you be so kind to tell me if you already finished or do you need a couple of extra minutes? Are you ready? Have you finished? Or do you need a couple of extra minutes? Not yet. <clears throat> we need. Perfect. Excellent. So I'm going to set up two more minutes. Thank you. Yes, Elu. I cannot hear you, Elu. Yes. Excuse me. No, yep. I was. I, I finished. Ah, okay. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to give just a couple of minutes for the ones that haven't finished. But if you already finished, thank you so much for letting me know. And in just a couple of minutes, we'll be reviewing the answers. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. I finish. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, guys, I think the two, two minutes have already passed. So let's go ahead and take a look at the answers. So who wants to help me with number one? Number one? Me, Elu. Okay, thank you, Elu. Okay, he tried to avoid interrupting my question. He tried to avoid interrupting my question. Mm, I have a different verb. I mean, although the sentence makes sense, but I think we need a different option here. It's not answer, like okay. the example. Okay, very good. He tried to avoid, Jose Francisco, what? Answering. Answering, right? Answering my question, okay? Thank you very much. He tried Can to I avoid. try the second one? Go ahead. I'm trying to concentrate. Please stop making so much noise. Correct, right? So please stop making so much noise. Good job. What about number three? If you can, please raise your hand so I can see uh, the name of the person, Me right? Too. Okay. I Who's enjoy that? listening uh, to music. Excellent. Thank you. I enjoy listening to music. Uh, Claudia, thank you. I Sorry, think. okay. Uh -huh. The number four, okay. I consider applying I consider applying for the job, but in the end, I decide against it. Okay, very good. So in the end, she decided to do the opposite, right? Not applying. Okay, thank you so much. What about number five? Number five. Me, teacher. Okay, uh, Sandra. 
I'm sorry, es que veo las manos. Cuando, cuando no. dicen mí, uh, no, okay. no puedo ver el nombre, solo cuando levantan las manos. So, eh, Sandra, tell me. Have you, have, have you finished, finished reading the newspaper yet? Okay, have you finished? Right, have you finished? In this case, with T sound, have you finished reading the newspaper yet? Thank you so much, Sandra. Who's next? Quien sigue? Raise your hand. Okay, Jose Francisco, tell me. We need to change our routine. We can't go on living like this. Thank you so much. Oops, sorry guys, let's reveal the siguiente. I, I double clicked, I'm sorry. So it's, uh, we need to change our routine, right? We can't go on living like this, muy bien. It's better to avoid traveling during the rush hour. Sometimes you may find the verb traveling with two L's, right? Whenever you find it with two L's, it's the British version, right? So traveling will be uh, for um, British people and traveling with just one L, it's going to be for North American people, okay? What about number eight, Gen C? Okay, my memory is getting worse. I keep forgetting things. Okay, I keep forgetting things. Very good, okay? What about number nine? Thank you, Gen C. Number nine? I've given up trying to learn Japanese. I was making no progress. Ah, okay, but that's number 10. What about number nine? Number nine? I've put up paying this bill so many times. I really must do it today. Very good, okay, so I've, I've put off paying these bills, okay, and I've given up trying to learn Japanese. <laughs> I was not, I was making no progress, right, because actually Japanese is a very difficult language to learn, right, and you need a lot of time and dedication. So what about number 11, guys? Number 11? 11, number 11? If you gave you risk losing your money. Exactly, right? If you gamble, if you gamble, you risk losing your money, right? So it's better not to do that. And the last one, number 10, number 12, I'm sorry, number 12. Will you mind not interrupting me all the time? Let me speak. Let me speak, right? Okay, very good. That is correct. So as you can see, Every single verb that we have used in the list in each of the sentences are the verbs, right, that um, whenever you find it, oh, what does gamble mean? Gamble means, I think it's apostar, right? And whenever you go to a casino, if you gamble, it means that you are um, offering your money, right? If you win, so you get something, you know, in return, but if you lose, you lose everything, even the money that you were betting, right? Apostar. You're welcome. Teacher, I have a question. Yeah. And what about with the word losing? Is the same like like the other word that with double L or, for example, losing with double O is for British people or 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 is not? Double O, uh -huh. lose. Ah, no, but lose is an adjective. Uh -huh. For example, whenever you um, use a blouse or a shirt, right? A shirt that is big, you're wearing something that is loose. Loose is flojo, right? Um, let me see. I think you're talking about this word, right? Loose? Uh, no. No. It's like losing. How do you in spell it? Number, number 11, if you gamble, you risk losing your money. Uh -huh, lose? Uh -huh. Okay, but what is the word that you're saying? I'm sorry, can you spell it? With double O. Losing, but with double O. Is it 
Is it correct or incorrect to write it like with double O? Uh, no, no, actually this the, with double O, does, it doesn't exist. This? Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. So I, I was confused. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. The other one, this one is an adjective. Y es flojo. Ese sí es adjetivo. But talking about closing, right? About close. Uh, but the other one, no, it's losing. Mm -hmm. Very good. Ah, I think I understand what you're saying. Yeah, because sometimes there are some people that um, um, confuse, right? The two words, but actually no. Yeah, if you see, I clicked uh, here and I found like um, comparison. And if you want, I'm going to share it. Le voy a compartir aquí en el chat un link. Especialmente para usted, para quien me hizo la pregunta. And you will see, ahí va a ver que hay otras personas que han hecho la misma pregunta, pero, right, eh, they are not related, no están relacionadas, but you can find more information there, okay? Very good. Okay, let's continue. I think the next exercise, it's a little bit different because here it says put the words in the right order, right? Put the words in the right order. So the first one, it says, did she, did she really say that? Right? <laughs> Sometimes we ask that in Spanish, de verdad dijo eso, decimos nosotros, right? Did she really say that? And then you have the, the words, uh, that, remember, her, saying, don't. And then it begins with I. So the order of the first one would be I, don't remember her saying that, right? So for that, you are going to use the second part of what I shared in the WhatsApp group. There are two pictures that I shared in the WhatsApp group. So take a look at the second one, right? We're going to use that information right now. What we have to do is to organize the words. I don't remember her saying that. Right, so we are going to organize. ¿Cuál era la información que teníamos? Well, we had something like this. Let me open up the, the, the image. So it says verb plus someone plus verb plus ing. That is the formula, right? Verb plus someone plus verb plus ing. So let's go ahead and work on this one. And let's take, uh, let's see, four minutes, okay? Four minutes. There we go. Four minutes to complete this one.
Are you ready, guys? Once you finish, please let me know so we can check the answers. Yes, yes, you tell me. Um, yes. Um, you had finished. Yes. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. What about the rest? After the, we check this exercise, we're going to move to um, the platform and we're going to discuss exercise 1.8 and also a little bit of the information that we have available about the topic. Okay, so time's up. Let's go ahead and see if you were able to um, find, you know, the uh, right order or to honest scramble the sentences. So thank you, Elio, for letting me know. What about number two? Do we have a volunteer for number two? Me, Elio. Go ahead, Elio. I don't mind if, if you drive in my car. Okay, very good. Let's go ahead and display the answer to see if it's correct. Just give me a sec. Going to. So I don't mind you say driving, right? Okay. Yeah. Very good. So it's okay. You can say I don't mind driving, uh, driving eat, or I don't mind driving my car, right? That's correct. Thank you so much. What about number three, guys? What about number three? Yes, uh, Francisco. Can you imagine anybody being so irresponsible? Okay, let's see. Can you imagine anybody being so irresponsible? Okay, very good. What about number four? Number four, thank you, Jen C. Okay. We we can't start reading it. Uh, I think it's it. I think they're talking about the rain, uh, the weather, right? And what I have is we can't stop it raining. Como no podemos detener la lluvia, right? We can't stop okay. it raining. Claudia, I don't. <clears throat> sorry. I don't want to keep waiting with you. Okay, so in that case, you can say something like, I don't want to keep you waiting, right? So the information that I was that we were using here for this particular um, section, guys, is this. Let me see. Uh, so we have remember. Uh, the person, someone, and verb plus ing. Verb, someone, verb plus ing. Uh, imagined, right? Someone, verb plus ing. Verb, something, verb plus ing. Verb, subject. Verb plus ing. Okay, so that's the pattern that we have, and we need to be very careful, right? Because actually, um, that's the way we're gonna use it. I mean, sometimes we can do it that way. Sometimes it is not, you know, necessary to do it that way. But it'd be better to go ahead and take a look at the the verb if and see if it's possible to 
uh, insert there right that person. So I'm going to delete all my drawings and I'm going to go back here. Me voy a regresar para acá para que ustedes puedan ver. You see, the information that we were putting into practice was this, right? With some verbs, you can use a structure verb plus someone plus verb plus ing. That's why you have it like this, right? And here you have some examples. You can stop people, you know, doing what they want. I can't imagine George riding a motorcycle or I can't imagine him riding a, a motorcycle. Did she really say that? I don't remember her saying that. Sorry to keep you waiting for long. So those are some examples that we have. Now I'm going to stop sharing here and I'm going to move to my presentation. And I'm going to uh, move a little bit quicker here to this part, because actually this is the information I think that we were, you know, um, having problems with in the platform, on the platform, I'm sorry. So the verbs, I think it's over here. Let me see. This one, noun closes after B, okay? So first, let's go ahead and define what a noun close is. Because actually here in the exercise that we were discussing before, exercise 1.8, this one, it says, rewrite sentences, instructions, read the following sentences, then combine them. Combine them to make one simple sentence, right? Remember to use capital letters at the beginning of your sentence and a period at the end because we're making sentences, right? So we need to be very careful with that. Now, what happens here? Well, since we have, um, since we have, since we have uh, more than, you know, uh, one piece of information, we have two uh, clauses, right? So we need to make sure that we are doing it the right way. Now, let's take a look at the information. If you go to your manual, if you go to your manual on page number seven, you will be able to find this. Noun clauses after B. Noun clauses after B. Okay, cool. So it says, I'm trying to make it bigger, but um, it's kind of blurry, I'm sorry. A noun clause is a part, a noun clause, I'm sorry, is a part of a sentence that has both. Okay, what, what does it have? It has two things. It has a subject and a predicate. That's what we have, right, even in Spanish. So head to predicate. So we have a subject and a predicate. That is optional in noun clause clauses after B. So also notice the preposition used in each sentence. So let's take a look at the examples here, right? So the only trouble with being a two income family is, is that when you have that, it is between parentheses. So if that is between parentheses, it means that it is optional that you can include it or you can omit it. And the reason why is because we have a noun cl clause and also because um, it's preceded by the verb be, okay? So the, the only trouble with being a two income family is that or is we don't spend as much time together. The big advantage of having grandma at home is that, or is, she can babysit more often, right? So here, guys, if you take a look at the first section, what happens is that whenever I am using a preposition after that, if I want to use a verb, that verb needs to be with ing. Travel with doing the exercise, travel with uh, fixing the car, travel with cooking um, hamburgers, travel with um, fixing the computer, right? The big advantage of, the big advantage of living in San Salvador, the big advantage of studying English, the big advantage of um, 
watching movies in English, etc. You name it, right? So whenever you use a preposition after it, you're going to use a um, you're going to use a, a gerund. Okay. This exercise, este es el que ustedes tienen en la plataforma. You see? Look at the example at the starting point of page six. Can you find a noun clause in the last example? Which preposition is used in the first part of the sentence? Then combine sentences. Este, this one is the one that you have in the platform. Okay, now let's move to the platform. Vamos a dejar este por acá. And now let's go to the platform. I'm going to close this. I don't need it. And over here, we have the first one, right? If you see number one, it's already answered. Ya está la de la primera. The nice thing about being the youngest in the family is that I get a lot of attention. So I'm the youngest in the family. And the nice thing is I get a lot of attention. So if I combined the two of them, I'm going to include elements from the two sentences, right? The nice thing about being the youngest in the family is that I get a lot of attention. Great combination, actually. Okay, so now let's go ahead and come here. We're going to type our um, sentence. Let me see. We have for this one two options. Okay, stop. We have two options, okay? The options that we have are these ones. Okay, so. so these are the two answers that we have available in the platform. The nice thing about being the youngest in the family is that I get a lot of attention or the nice thing about being the youngest in the family is I get a lot of attention. So you can either include the um, that section or you can remove it. You just remove it, okay? It's optional, remember. Now, what about the next one? Okay, what about the next one? Let's see. I have a I have a yeah, go ahead. Uh, the preposition about is not in the in the first in the first question. Mm -hmm. You read, I am the youngest in the family, and I think I get a lot of attention. We need to uh have this proposition think about that's about. totally right that's totally right uh -huh. i mean it depends here uh, the preposition that better you know fits right the um the situation but generally whenever we are talking about you know uh, a nice thing there is a nice thing about something right so um in this case it is recommended to go ahead and use the preposition about but actually you're right and you Probably one of the things that makes this exercise confusing is the fact that you need to change some things. And one of those uh, things is the preposition in some of them. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, pretty much if we go again to the, um, to the manual, let me see. There are some uh, phrases that they use over here, right? The only trouble with the big advantage of, the nice thing about, right? So um, there are some things, right, that over here, right, eh, they give you like a hint. Le dan como una clave, you see? An advantage of being, a problem with being, one benefit of being, a bit disadvantage of having, the best thing about having, etc. So here you have like some phrases that can help you to combine them, right? So that's the reason why you find a different preposition there. Um, I don't know if I answered your question, Elu. Yes. Okay, very good. So what about this one, guys? What comes to your mind? Let's see if we can make up this one with the time that we have. I have a younger sister. The trouble is she always wants to borrow my clothes. 
So what do you think would be the right option or the right answer for this one? From the phrases that I showed you, from the phrases that I showed you, which one do you think it would be uh, suitable? Anyone? No, okay, don't worry, I'll help you. So we, we are going to begin with something that combined them together, okay? So we are going to say something like this. The trouble, the trouble with, okay? I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to, well, I'm not going to delete and I'm going to share them through the chat, okay? The two options. Sorry, no, no las copio. One option and the second option. There you go. So I'm going to delete this from here and we go here. So the trouble with, why? Because I have the trouble here, right? Acá teníamos the nice thing. Por eso tenemos the nice thing about. So the trouble with, the trouble with. What would be the next part? of this section. The trouble with what? What is the trouble? Having a younger sister? Exactly. The trouble with having a younger we also aquí estoy escribiendo en el chat. Sorry guys. Aquí está. The trouble with having a younger sister. Uh huh. Is what? She always wants to uh huh. She always wants to borrow my clothes. Exactly. That's the answer. <laughs> and here we have that as an option, right? So the trouble with having a younger sister is she always wants to borrow my clothes. Or the trouble with having a younger sister is that she always wants to borrow my clothes, right? So I'm going to share it with you here. Uy, perdón, trouble, it's with you. Ahí está, you. Trouble, trouble. Ahí está. There you have. Very good. Okay, we're going to include it here. Lo vamos a incluir más. Pero solo una, así que le vamos a borrar ese that. Right over here. I think... We are okay here. And then I'm going to include the other one. This one over here. Bye. Now let's continue with the number three. Okay, number three. What comes to your mind, guys? What do you think would be the best option for number three? I'm away at college. The bad part is that I miss my, my, my family. The bad part of being away is that I miss my family. Okay, very good. The bad part of being away, muy bien, is I miss my family. Good job. Okay. And here, that would be an option, right? The sad part of being away is that I miss my family. Okay. Ah, oh, and I'm going to include the... the uh, option here, I mean the capital letter. Cuando la vayan a poner en su, en su tarea, en su, en su plataforma, recuerde quitarle el that, porque ahí solo se lo estoy poniendo como una opción y esa opción no va en la respuesta, ¿de acuerdo? Just for, don't forget that. Cuando ya lo vaya a ingresar, quítele ese that, o si lo va a dejar con that, quítele el, el paréntesis, ¿de acuerdo? Good job, excellent. So we're going to look or the next one. This one I'm going to include it here. I'm going to include it. What about number four? Number four? I work at night. The worst thing is I can't have dinner with my family. What do you think would be the best option? Mm -hmm. the, work, the worst thing for having... Uh, work at night is I can have dinner with my family. Okay, the worst thing. What is the proposition that you use? For having. Okay, so 
the word thin for, for mm, I cannot use for here, but I can use about. Okay, the word thin about, what will be the next thing? The word about having... Ahí escuché la respuesta al fondo, eh, Francisco Antonio. Por ahí dijeron working, okay? So the worst thing about working at night is I can't have dinner with my family, okay? Remember that in this case, you can switch, you know, the the uh, information from the clothes, okay? So the worst thing about working at night is, aquí vamos a ponerle mayúscula, and also that is optional, right? The worst thing about working at night is I can't have dinner with my family or is that I can't have um, dinner with my family. Aquí va, esto mal, quiero ver, esto diría acá. There we go. Ok, there we go. Y ahora para ponerla acá en, el, en la plataforma le vamos a quitar el dat, porque la voy a dejar sin dat. Ok, y lo colocamos acá. What about the last one? Ok, I'm the oldest in the family. One bad thing is that I always have to babysit. So what would be the right answer for this one? One ba bad thing about being the oldest in the family is that I always have the have to babysit. Correct. Thank you so much, Claudia Marcela. One bad thing, right, about being the oldest, right, in the family is that I always, oops, always have to baby. Sit okay, and also uh, over here, this one is going to be optional, right? This one is optional, so if you want, you can include it or you can omit it. Okay, so now that we have all the answers, I'm going to sure. share sure. it with you. Yeah, can, can we use one bad thing of think of instead of think about? One bad thing of one bad thing of being the oldest. Mm, you know what? Actually, I wouldn't dare to use it because I don't think it sounds natural. Um, let me see. Yeah, because actually, I'm taking a look at some examples. Uh, it says, where, where do we use about and off? Off, you said, right, Elie? Yep. Okay. It says, even though the two prepositions of and about seems very similar in their meaning, they share different meanings as rules with, with regard to their proper usage. The main difference between of and about is that of implies a possessive quality while uh, about implies concerning or on the subject of something. So, aquí creo que tenemos la respuesta. Se lo voy a compartir. Okay. So, if you see, take a look at the chat, guys. There is that. The difference is, you know, the, uh, the usage. Entonces, si yo le cambio aquí the bad thing off. Si yo lo dejase así off con el off. Off, I'm sorry. Ahí estaríamos con el uso, pero es más que todo con possessive. Si ustedes se fijan, ahí dice, the main difference between of and about is that of implies a possessive quality. Y en here, we're not talking about a possessive quality. Si no, estamos usando about. ¿Por qué? Porque it implies concerning 
or on the subject of something, right? So the one thing concerning being the oldest in the family, right, is that I always have to babysit. So that's the reason why it's better to use about and not of because the usage will be different and also it sounds more natural. Mm -hmm. Very good. Excellent. So I'm going to include this one here and let's go ahead and see what we got. Oh, look, all of them are correct. Okay. This is um, oh, just what you have to do. Remember, it's to put into practice, you know, um, the phrases with the prepositions, because actually that was the use um, um, that um, we need to understand, right, to include the sentences. Entonces, si quieren, lo voy a copiar directamente desde acá, desde la plataforma, para que ustedes lo copien o ustedes revisen las respuestas después, revisen cómo las habían hecho ustedes y cómo las hicimos en la clase para que vean en lo que se habían equivocado. So, ahí se las dejo todas. Las estoy copiando directamente desde acá, ¿ok? En el chat. Ahí está. Tome la captura de pantalla o cópielas, etc. ¿Alguna pregunta, chicos? ¿Questions? ¿Nadie? Ok, perfecto. Entonces, igual, ah, me dijeron por ahí el 1.2. Vaya, el 1.2 se los debo para mañana, vea, me, me, me hacen la esperita, porque este, quiero ver, si sí, ya nos tomaría más tiempo y no quisiera detener a los, a los que ya se tienen que ir. But eh, 1.2, don't worry guys, we will answer that tomorrow. Um, eh, after we have, you know, some explanation from the class. Pero si no, si, si, si puede también, pues puede avanzar en otro, en otro ejercicio mientras esperamos la explicación para ese, ¿verdad? Así que I'm going to pass the attendance right now. Voy a pasar la asistencia y luego pues finalizamos la clase. Give me a second. Eh, Alba Dir por tal días. Here. Thank you. Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Present teacher. Thank you. Ana Francisca García Nieto. Present teacher. Thank you, Carlos Antonio González Nuila. No está. Eh, Claudia Marcela Linares Urquía. Present. Thank you. Diego Anthony Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you. Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Present. Thank you. Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Present teacher. Thank you. Francisco Antonio Sánchez Jovel. Present. Thank you. Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Present. Thank you, Jose Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Present. Thank you, Jose Francisco Peña Peña. Present. Thank you, eh, Jose Isaías Portillo Ramos. Present, teacher. Thank you, Jose Jovito Torres Amaya. Present, teacher. Thank you, Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. Present. Thank you, Maria Azucena Ayala de Flores. Present. Thank you, Marvin Joseph Salazar Ares. Alas, perdón. Present teacher. Thank you, Nate Ibis Mendez Albeño. Present teacher. Thank you, Rafael Antonio Morales Martinez. Present. Thank you, Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez Morales. Present. Thank you, Rodrigo Daniel Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you, Rosa Maria del Milagro Pérez de Paz. I'm here. Thank you, Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Present. Thank you, Jensi Marlene Leon López. Present teacher. Thank you, and Zulma Beatriz Pérez Galdames. Present. Thank you, Beatriz. Thank you so much. Bye, chicos. So I'm going to stop here. Eh, but if you have questions, remember to write down. O así como hicieron hoy, solo me mandan el recordatorio del ejercicio que quieren que veamos. Solo nos queda pendiente. Y aquí lo tengo en mi post-it. <laughs> eh, 1.2. Okay. So 1.2, we're going to check that tomorrow. And if you have more questions, don't forget uh, to bring them to your class so we can answer and clarify your doubts. So thank you very much for joining, guys. Have a good night. And let's meet tomorrow. Okay. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye, guys. Take care. Good night. Good night. Good night.